Hello, this is Haboo71. I would like to do my first video on application to um, air flight in pursuit of my uh, commercial pilot's license. So this first video is going to be about Bernoulli's principle and we're going to touch on carburetor icing. So I have my miniature plane here that I, I built. You better I paid $30 for it. You're better off just buying one and not building a plastic model airplane. Um, the, uh, the landing gear fell off within the first day and the propeller fell off after dropping it a few times. Um, so that, this is the plane that I'm going to use to do a lot of illustrations until I get another one. And I used two Sprite bottles connected in the center for a constriction to reflect a Venturi tube. And this would be an example of Bernoulli's principle. So what we have here is this would be the intake side. This would be the outtake side and the same amount of mass of air entering the tube has to equal the same amount of mass exiting the tube. So at the point of constriction, the velocity of the fluid air would have to increase and the pressure would decrease. Now this is applicable to the very four forces of flight, which would be lift, weight, drag, and thrust. And the application, application is, is that when air strikes the leading edge of the wing, it creates a boundary layer about the thickness of one card from a stack of cards and flows over the surface of the top half of the wing at a faster rate, which creates a lower pressure. And underneath the wing, it stays at a steady rate, which would be a higher pressure. And that is the application of Bernoulli's principle, the, one of the foundation principles of flight. I'm going to hold here to catch my breath. So I will now go ahead and remove the plane because it's no longer needed for the illustration. And the application to carburetor icing. So the general function of a carburetor is to provide an air fuel mixture into the engine for combustion. So the outside air would flow through an air filter and it's filtered and the filtered air flows into the carburetor through a venturi. The carburetor has an inlet jet for the fuel, which is not here, but just imagine a, an inlet jet that comes down through the top of this in the intake side and injects fuel right into the center of the venturi constriction. So the outside air flows through the air filter, the filtered air flows in the carburetor and through the venturi. The venturi tube creates a low pressure at the constriction where the fuel is delivered through a main jet. The main jet would be right in there. And the fuel is vaporized within the venturi and the air flowing at a higher velocity, lower pressure and lower temperature. So the ice would readily form in the venturi and on the throttle body, which would be on this side, going onto the intake of the engine. So we have to remember that there is moisture in the air that we breathe, that we inhale, we exhale. And on a high humidity days, there is obviously moisture within the air. And we use the standard assumption of a three and a half degree loss of temp per thousand feet up to 36,000 feet. So on a 90 degree day, if we're flying at 5,000 feet, the intake air going into the engine is going to be roughly 72 and a half degrees Fahrenheit. And the temp drop inside the Venturi can be as much as 60 to 70 degrees, which puts us below 32 degrees Fahrenheit, which could create the icing. So recap, carburetor icing, it occurs due to the effect of fuel vaporization and the decrease in air pressure, which causes a sharp temperature drop in the carburetor. Ice would form on the throttle body, which would be on this side of the, uh, on this side of the intake or the intake air. This would be on the way to the engine. The throttle body would be right in there. Um, and the ice would form inside the Venturi tube. So what are the consequences or what do we need to look out for? When is this uh, an issue for beginning pilots in a Cessna 172, Cessna 152? that is running without fuel injection. 
So for a fixed pitch propeller, the first indication of carburetor icing is a decrease in RPM because the combustion of the air fuel mixture is decreasing. So, and that is followed by engine roughness, which is the failure of proper combustion. And for a constant speed propeller, usually the indication by a decrease in the manifold pressure, but not reduction in the RPM really. Um, so a constant speed propeller, what happens is, is you, the RPM stays the same and the fixed propeller, I'm not the fixed, the, the propeller will rotate to adjust for that, to keep the RPM at the same rate, at the same speed, and the man manifold pressure will decrease. So when is this dangerous? This is particularly dangerous when we're using reduced power during a descent. So under certain conditions, carb ice could be building up unnoticed until power is added. If you have a missed approach, we have to nurse the velocity back into the throttle. We have to slowly creep our way out because of the reverse command. And so that's one thing to look out for. So, and the other thing is carb heat reduces the output of the engine. Of course, because we're not getting proper fuel combustion, we're not getting a, cop, uh, a proper bang inside the combustion chamber, the pistons, and that tends to increase the operating temperature. And the other thing is carb heat should not be used when full power is required, like during takeoff or during normal engine operation. Under normal flight, you would be flying on a high humidity day, you would recognize that we need to be concerned about carb heat. If we're running a carburetor on a, our Cessna 172, you would watch the RPM rate. You see a, a slight decrease in the RPM rate, followed by some roughness. Then you would add carb heat. Carb heat would melt the ice. There'd be continued roughness. The RPM would increase or the manifold pressure would increase. And then you would reduce the carb heat. You, you wouldn't want to keep the carb heat going on because then you increase the temperature inside the combustion chamber, which is where the piston head is and the spark plugs are. And if the temperature gets too hot, you can foul the spark plugs. Um, if it gets really, really hot, you, you could burn off the top of the, uh, the piston and then have an engine failure. Your, your temperature gauge would tell you that right away. So um, that is a review of Bernoulli's principle and carb heat. I thank you for watching this video. Um, I look forward to making some more videos and have a nice day.